All right, in this video, we're going to look at how to make a RSS widget using the New York Times RSS feeds. We can get several topics here. Just do a Google search for New York, New York Times RSS. And inside of here, as you can see, there are several RSS feeds. For example, in technology, you can get technology, bits, blog, personal text. So each one has a, a bunch of different topics. And I actually had those over here. The one, uh, you know, testing some of these, I couldn't get this sports one to work. And I have it right here. Uh, let me scroll to it. I'm going through all these topics that I have right now. I couldn't get sports to work. I, I don't know what's up with it, but all these other ones are working just fine, as you can see. And um, as we go through these topics here, I can actually go through, like, let me go to politics because that's one that I'm going to show you something there as well. Uh, you may have noticed this number right here is changing. One of 18. There's 18 articles inside of the politics topic. Let me find politics real quick. That is going to be this one right here. Uh, I got something to show you inside of there, but uh, inside of here we have 18 articles in this thing. Now we're gonna let KOWP do all the nitpicking, getting all this stuff. We don't have to parse this XML file ourselves. We can let the functions of KOWP do it for us using the RSS wget function. Now inside of here, if I scroll through some of these and I'm going backwards, you may notice this number right here is changing. That's exactly what I want it to do. But there is one in here where it says no image available. And what I've done is I've actually added that image in there and I have it set up because some of these uh, articles do not have an image. This one right here, for example. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm over here in the RSS widget for politics and in this RSS file, we, we had these items, all these items that you see here. These are the articles, really, uh, of what's you know what you can read about, where it has the links, description, images, etc. So if I search for the word item like that, it returns 18. There's 18 articles, and as you can see, that matches that number right there. I know that's small, but hopefully you can see that. And inside of these items, we have the URL for the image, which is this right here. Now, what I'm going to do, I have 18 items. If I search for the word content URL, watch how many of these content URLs it's going to return. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to search for that up here. Notice it only says 17. That means one of these articles in here, one of these articles in this long XML file is missing an image. And it turns out it's this one right here. If you look at this item right here between these two item tags, there is no content URL. There is no .jpg anywhere in this one. Whereas if you look at the one above it, you know, this item right from here to here, we do have a content URL. We do have a JPEG, as you can see right there. So what I have going on, if we look at the title for the one that doesn't have an image, this one does not have an image. The title was US hardening line on China, blah, 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 blah. That's exactly the article title we see over here. We see the description for that, which is that that we see right there. Um, regardless, we can still click on this no image available. And if we click on that, it should open up that article still. So US hardening line. And it turns out there is no image inside of this article. That's probably why it's not returning one you know, on the XML file or the RSS in KOWP. So with that said, I can still scroll to another article. For example, let me go to the very next one. House passes two strict immigration bills. Uh, so boom, we got it right there. That's the very next one in line. We can click on that and it should take us to that article in uh, our web browser as well, as you can see it does. Okay, and we can do this, it's all linked together. This may look real crazy, but the actual functions and coding we have to do is not that bad. So inside of KOWP, I wanna show you the globals that I'm using first. The globals that I'm using are, there are four of them. Um, there's two text globals, there's one that's no image, that's a picture, and then there's a list global down here. The list global is where we're going to add our topics. Now my topics that I have right now are golf, economy, personal tech, space, politics, sports, which doesn't work, I don't know why, and it goes back to golf. Now I can come and get a new one, and I'm gonna show you how quickly we can add that. Let's see if science works. So I'm gonna open up the science one, I'm gonna copy and paste that URL right into this list global that I've already created. So I'm gonna check that list global that I've called NYT. I'm gonna go and edit it. And instead of me going to the end, I'm just gonna come right here, I'm gonna put a comma, and I'm gonna go back in front of that comma, and I'm going to paste that URL. What this should do now is create a new one for science. I'm gonna click OK, and notice if I click on this list global, there's now a science one here. So if I click on that, and if I save this, and I go back to the home screen, 
just like that, it's loaded up yet another one. Now you may recognize this image here, but maybe that was the same one from the space RSS. And if I scroll through these, since this is a new one I just loaded, it may take a minute for the images to load. But as you can see, it is loading those just fine. And not only that, it's going to update the number of articles you have inside of it, and we can still go back and forth between our various topics. And again, I don't know why sports isn't working, but if you narrow down sports to, what was it? I did golf, for example, you know, you can just skip that one. I don't know why it's not working for me. Maybe it will work for you, but I did get golf to work. So talking about these globals one more time with you, this text global zero, just create a text global and type in a zero. I'll show you why in a minute. This is actually going to help us uh, go through the number of articles where you have like one of 23, two of 23, three of 23, etc. Now, if we go to count, what this is going to be. So I mentioned the list global, uh, the global variable MYT, New York Times, and we want to use the web get function for the RSS that's built right into KOWP. So if I scroll down a little bit on the RSS, we're using uh, this one right here. So I'm doing web get, and then instead of me using this URL in quotations, I'm using the list global because that list global contains all those URLs, comma RSS, it matches perfectly, comma count, but then I want to subtract one from it. And the reason why I want to subtract one from this is because the way KOWP does this is that zero like when if zero counts as the first RSS in KOWP. So it starts indexing at zero, so to speak. So if there's 23 articles, it's actually going to cycle through them zero through 22. That might not make much sense, but I'm going to try to explain that to you a little bit more right here in a second. So this is going to be our count, and this can change depending on what website you are at. We'll have to use this in our functions right here in a little while. Um, the no image, just get you any image that says no image available or something to uh, symbolize, hey, there's not an image for that article. Now let's go into this actual piece and let's look and see how to create each part. So the title, I'm going to do that first. I'm not going to go over all the, the overlap and stat groups. I'm just going to go, how do we get that title to show up? So I'm going to the code for the title and it's a web get. I'm using the RSS. So again, I'm back down here. And right inside of here, we want the title. So I'm pretty much using that code right there, except I'm changing my URL. Um, I got my RSS and I got GVNUM. Now GVNUM is, right now GVNUM is zero, but check this out. So let me go to, I don't know, what topic am I on right now? So I'm inside of my science topic right now. That was that global variable that I just created a moment ago when I added it into the GV New York Times. So that's the one that I'm on. now. This uh, GVNUM that I've added to my code, if I come in here and just change this to a zero, technically what that's doing is it's returning the title in item number one. The first item of this XML is returning the title right there. So we want to use a zero for the first one. And then if I type in a one, it should go to the second item. So if I go to my second item in my list, uh, there's our title, this beautiful parasitic bird could boom. Yep, that's the same thing. So there we go. Now, the reason why we want to tie GVNUM into this is because when we create our buttons, we can actually cycle through these things, and that way we don't have to go in there and put a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and all that stuff. So that's going to make it a lot easier to cycle through them. That's it for your title. Now, on to the description. So the description, very similar code, except... We're going to do DESC, and again, that's in your web get. We scroll down a little bit on our RSS. There it is right there, so we can get our description, and we're using GVNUM there as well. So all these codes are being done. All this pulling and parsing of information is being done by KOWP. We don't have to do a lot of XML stuff for this particular uh, tutorial. Now let's go ahead and go on over to the image. And you guessed it, I have a square set up, and underneath FX, for this thing, for the square, I have it the texture set to bitmap. And for that bitmap code, now here's what I got going on with this. Sometimes there are not going to be images. And I mentioned that to you back in the politics one. If you recall, you know, we had 18 articles, but it's only returning 17 of those content URLs. So basically I said this. If, well, let's talk about this code right here. WG blah, 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 blah. This is the web get code. So web get, there's my URL. RSS, GVNUM, just like the title and description. And then I have thumb, that stands for thumbnail. 
that's what's going to get returned if the URL is not blank. Now check out what this code says. So if this URL here for thumb, if it's blank, so if it's equal to nothing, I got double quotations with nothing in between them. So basically if it's blank, I want to return GV no image. That is that image that we created in our globals, our bitmap that says no image available or a circle with a slash or whatever image you want to show. If that thumbnail URL is blank, that means there's not one in that article, you're gonna return that image, no image available. Well, what if it's not blank? That's when we're going to return this thumbnail URL, which is what we have right here. So this is an if then code to either get the no image picture if we don't have an image or to get the URL for the image. And as long as we have that URL for the image or whatever we may have, it's going to be displayed as this picture here, whether it be no image available or the actual URL getting pulled from the RSS. So that's it for the image. Oh, no, it's not. If we go and touch this image, I got it set to open link and then you guessed it. Uh, it's the web get code for RSS to get the link. So really this is the big piece here. We're just changing title to DESC for description. We're changing it to THUMB for thumb. And now we got link. Well, all of these are down there in the web get code. As you can see, there's thumb. Heck, we can even get the date, I'm guessing. I haven't used that. The link, that's what I'm using here because now when I touch it, I want to go to this link. So by us applying this link code to the touch open link, we can now open that link when we touch that image as I was showing you a moment ago. So that's it for the title, description, the image, the link. Now let's talk about how am I getting this title, topic title to show up. That's a little bit of regex. So if I go and find that in my little piece here, I got this text set, set up. So right now it says science. Basically what I'm doing here is this, I'm doing a little bit of regex to, and I'm using that URL. So let me go to that URL. I'm just gonna type it in right here and show you what I'm doing. GV New York Times, boom. Okay, so what you see right here, what I just typed in is returning this URL. And what I'm doing is I'm doing some regex on it. So I'm going to undo all this regex and I'm gonna show you how to get it because this will help you understand regex more if you're a little bit iffy with it. I'm not a pro with it by any means, but um, I feel pretty confident in getting what I want from it. So I had the same URL twice up here because I'm gonna show you how we're changing one to get this word science out of here. So this second one here, what I wanna do is Every URL, the topic title is right here at the very end of the URL, right before XML and right after this last backslash. So what I'm gonna do is, for right now, let me do a TC regex, so text converter, reg, comma, at the end of that little GVNYT, I'm gonna put a comma, and in quotations, I'm gonna search for backsplash, backsplashes, <laughs> backslashes, and then I'm going to replace them with nothing. Replacing them with nothing means simply put two quotes right beside each other, and I'm closing it up with parentheses. Now compare the original one to this regex I just did. Here's the original URL, here's the regex. It looked for all of those backsplashes, backsplashes again, dagnabbit, backslashes, and it replaced them with nothing. I don't wanna search for just the backslashes. What I want to do is I wanna search for that last backslash and take everything that occurs in front of it and I want to replace it with nothing. So if I come down here to this and I put a period and a asterisk right in front of that backslash, notice it gives me down or it gives me just science. Now I want to get rid of the dot XML and a way we can do that, we can do another TC reg and we can search for, there's a couple ways you can do this, but I'm gonna do comma, and I'm just gonna do dot XML, close it up, and what do we wanna replace it with? So I'm putting a comma, replace it with absolutely nothing. So double quotations again, close it with your parentheses, and now we have the word science. So I did two regex pieces to get rid of all that stuff and leaving me with just the title. So that's all the words, the pictures, and the links. Now let's just go over these buttons real quick. What I have are down here in this, these two buttons are gonna let me cycle through. As you can see, I'm going through my particular topics. So I have a button, I'm just using a font icon. And if I go over to its touch, I'm toggling a global switch and it's real quick. Remember how we have that NYT list global that has all the URLs? Well, that's going to, if I toggle that switch and I just go to next value, it's gonna go from one value to the next. And it's going to 
pull the new titles, pull the new descriptions, pull the new links, the new thumbs, and it's also going to change that word of that topic all at one time when you touch that thing right there. It's pretty powerful. So uh, you guessed it for this one right here. If we go to that button, the arrow on the left, that's going to go backwards through these things. So if I go to touch, I'm toggling the same global, and instead of me doing next value, I'm doing previous value. So this will go backwards through your topics. Now, let me show you these up here to go through our particular top or particular feeds or particular articles inside of a topic. So right now I'm in golf. And if I go back out to title with descriptions, I'm going to go to my title because that's where these arrows are. So this is a little bit different with the coding. This is where we're going to change GVNUM. GVNUM is what actually changes our article number, our item number that's over here in the RSS stuff. So to do that, I have a little button. I go to its touch. I'm toggling GVNUM, which is a text global. And here's the code here. If I want to advance up one in my articles, the number of articles that I have, well, first of all, I need to test if my GVNUM is less than GV count. So GV count returns the number of articles that we have. But remember, I subtracted one from it back when I explained GV count to you, because technically when I go through these things, I want to be able to go start at zero and go up. Remember, for example, if we had 23 articles, it's actually going to go from zero to 22. If you had, say, 50 articles, it's going to count from zero to 49. So that's why I've subtracted one back in the globals when I created that GV count. But as long as GV num is less than that, we want to progress forward one. So I'm going to take GV num and we're going to add one to it. Otherwise, if it's not less than GV count, we're going to return back to zero, which is going to take us back to that first item, that first article in our RSS, in the XML, as I mentioned to you earlier in the tutorial. All right, so now let's look at how to go backwards. So here in the left arrow, if I go to its touch, its code's a little bit different too because now we want to be able to subtract. So basically, if GVNUM is greater than zero, if GVNUM is a positive number, we want to subtract. We want to go backwards. So we want to do GVNUM minus one. Now, what if it's not greater than zero? Then we want to return back to GV count. And GV count is going to take us to the last article. Now, again, if we had 23 articles, GV count is going to be 23 minus 1, so it's going to return us to 22. And again, the reason why it does that is because the way KOWP does this RSS stuff is it starts at 0 for its index. So the first one is 0, the second one is 1, and so forth. That's why that GV count, I had it set to the count minus 1, the number of articles minus 1 back in that global. I hope that makes sense. Maybe rewind back to the beginning uh, where I was talking about that GV count and how I subtracted 1 from it. Because this is about to confuse you even more if you're not confused yet. Let me show you how to get the number of articles here to round out this tutorial. So what I have down here is a text item. Now golf does not have a lot of articles evidently, but here's what I have for golf. Basically what I want, now since GVNUM can be zero, technically I want zero to be one when I see it with my eyes. I want to know, okay, hey, this is telling me right here that I have four articles. So I'm taking GV count and I'm adding one back to it because that's going to tell me how many articles I have inside of my RSS uh, particular topic. So GV count plus one. Well, I'm adding one to both of these because that's going to get rid of the zero. We'll never see zero here. And this is going to add one to GV count, which is going to give you the total number of articles inside of your RSS topic. So one of four. And now if I back out of here, if I start changing this, now if I click on this again, I've progressed one. So I'm at two of four. And now I press this again. So it's going to add one to it again. So now I'm at three of four. And then if I press this button to progress forward again, it's going to be at 4 of 4. So this is the last article in that RSS feed for golf. Now, if I progress forward one more time, it's going to backtrack to 1. And as you can see, it is showing 1 of 4. So that's what that whole touch of adding 1 to GVNUM. Whereas here, if I'm at 1 of 4 and I go backwards, it's going to go back to 4 of 4. Then it's going to go to 3 of 4. Then it's going to go to 2 of 4. Then it's going to go backwards to 1 of 4. So that's what's cool about using that text global and we can cycle back and forth. Not only that, 
if I go over to a brand new article, economy, notice everything's changing. Now I got one of 12, two of 12, three of 12, etc. And I can go backwards. And all of this is changing based on the way we're using our global variables. So it looks like right here, uh, head start at video game jamboree. This is the economy one. Let me find that real quick while I have you here. And if I scroll down, luckily it should be the last article, the very last one up here. If I look at this, let me refresh this page. And if we look at this, notice we don't have a .jpg. Perfect. There is no .jpg in here. And that's exactly why it's returning that no image available that you see there. Whereas if I go back one more, I know this stuff is real tiny. I'm sorry about that. I could be saving and going back to the home screen. But nonetheless, okay, this one here, preparing for Brexit. Notice it does have a URL right there. That might not be the exact icon, but as you can see there, we don't. We do have an icon, whereas here we don't have an image. Now let's add one more thing into here. Uh, after reviewing the video, I thought about this for a second. What we have to take care of too is if you go, suppose like you had a uh, topic that had 30 topics in it or 30 articles in it and you were on article number 28. If you went to another topic that had less than that, then it's going to cause some funky things to happen because it's not going to be able to find that high, higher number article in a topic that has a lower number of articles in it, if that makes sense. So one quick fix for that is going to be to put like a little reset button. Let me show you what I'm going to do here with this. I'm going to go to my title and description. I'm going to go into my title and I'm just going to add a font icon. And this font icon, I'm just going to find a refresh if there's one up here. Perfect. I'm going to put that refresh button in the top right hand corner of this little overlap group. I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm going to set its touch to set GVNum back to zero. So by setting GVNum back to zero, if you ever get to a spot, like I said, if, if you go from one topic and you're at a higher article number than the number of articles in the next topic you go to, that will cause a little hiccup. So what we want to do here, again, is set toggle global switch for this little refresh button, and let's set GVNum back to zero. And let's see if we can make this actually happen. I'm gonna show you exactly what happens here. So I'm gonna save that, go back to the home screen. And I'm going to go to a topic that has a lot of articles in it. Well, heck, here's one right here. So 12 of 8. Notice crazy things are happening here. Um, because, when that says 12 of 9, because it refreshed. But the reason why, I mean, 12, if I keep going up, it's going to reset it there. Um, and it's, it fixes it just like that. I never even pressed the reset button. But let me find one. Let me come to this one here. And I'm going to go up to article number 18. So, like, way on up there. All right, I'm going to go back a topic. Now, if we press backwards here, it's going to count down and it's not going to change anything because it's got to keep on going back down to 14. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press this refresh button and now boom, it's just refreshed it just like that. So that's the only little hiccup you can run into there when you have more articles in one topic versus the one that you go to next. And there you have it. That's how you can make an RSS widget using New York Times RSS feeds. We looked at how to get the title, the description. We looked at the thumbnails, the links. We also looked at how to add topics uh, like you see right here. We also looked at how to change uh, through all of the articles inside of those topics. So a lot was covered here. If you skipped over it, I suggest you go back and uh, pick up on those missing parts there. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.